So, now with these words I will start off that what we mean by a, a demand and supply and what are the relevance of say for example, demands and supply and what we mean by the concept of a price of, of a particular product or a service. So, I am using a very general word of a product or a service. So, generally product can be any any anything which is being bought and sold in the market and, and, and it can be a stock, it can be an option and services can be different type of financial services which you are giving. But we will only restrict our discussions later on with only related to financial one. But generally the first initial lectures would be very basic microeconomics which will give you that how demand and supply can be considered in order to find out the optimum price and optimum quantity based on which a product and service can be sold and bought in the market. So, if we if you see see the this, this curve here you basically have the price along the y axis and you have basically quantity along the x axis. So, when you and, and, and if you go to the market buy anything you, you want to buy some goods whether it can be any vegetable, it can be any product, any can be financial um, instrument whatever is being bought and sold. There would be a particular set of people who are interested to buy and particular set of people who are interested to sell. Now, another reason which we which I think is very important to understand the, the concept of demand and supply is that because say for example, if, if, if we are going to buy any product, we are buying to buying basically going to the, the market basically gives us a very good feel or regulates the price and the demand based on which that product and the service can be sold. Say for example, I go to the bank and want to basically take a loan. On the other hand, there can be people who want to go to the bank and basically deposit some money. So, obviously, the bank acts at an intermediary, basically a space or a meeting place where different people with different demands and supplies for different products can go into the market and basically exchange such that apart and from, from perfect information which may not be true in the actual sense in the actual practically perfect information being available to all the buyers and suppliers the overall place where this, this supply and demand takes place helps to regulate the price and demand at which value the overall product can be bought and sold. So, we will we'll come to those, those concepts later on also. So, now if, if you see the, the, the coordinate where, at where the, this, this price, so at the price and the quantity which is sold. So, basically what we know that is there is a quantity based on which uh, that particular product is being bought and sold and there is a price. So, now consider that if you have Bajaj share or say for example, you have Tata shares or say for example, you have some options. So, when you are trying to find out your investment returns, main concern comes is that what is the price based on which you can optimize your overall returns what is the price at which you can basically go for a derivative, what is the price at which you can basically formulate your portfolio, point number one. And point number two would be that what is the total quantum of such goods which you can buy and sell in order to basically optimize your portfolio. So, I am using the word optimize, optimize in a very general sense. Say for example, if I am a human being, my main concern is only profit. So, I will basically try to initialize my overall portfolio where I want to basically maximize or have the positive returns to the maximum sense. Another person can be where he or she wants to basically minimize the overall loss and for him or her profit is not important. So, for that person it will be more of a concern in order to basically try to see that the risk can be minimized to the maximum possible extent. Again, I am using the word risk in a very general sense. There are a different type of, of quantification of risk and what are the quantification all of us generally know in a very general sense. It can be standard deviation, it can be beta. What is beta? In the market sense we all know, but there are different techniques which have come up where you use different terms in the concept of risk and try to analyze any different problems in order to mitigate the overall risk for persons who are more concerned about the losses. So, if you if you see the overall uh, the risk return profile as I was discussing, so obviously the supplies can be of, of different values and the demands can be of different values. So, for different type of, of supplies and demands you will basically have different type of prices. So, one, one will be this, the second one will be, will be this and the third one will be this. 
So, when you are trying to basically analyze any, any, any stock, I am using the stock in a very general sense. It can be any financial instrument. What is more concerned is the price and what is the quantity which is being bought and sold. This is basically small q. Now, this price basically gives you the concept of returns. So, returns I will use the word as a letter a small r. So, there are different type of books where they use the use of capital R also, but those can be interchanged depending on how you try to analyze the problem. Now, our main concern is to find out the risk and return based on a particular set of returns which is small r. And as we formulate the portfolio, how different types of stocks can be combined giving their different type of values of r. Like say for example, if there are 10 type of 10 different stocks, you can would basically have r 1 till r 10, which will give you the corresponding returns of that per, of this 10 number of stocks and obviously, you will have their corresponding risk. So, general terms let me denote the risk as sigma 1 to sigma 10 and all of you know basically sigma means the standard deviation and obviously, there are other different techniques or, or, or symbols or methodologies to trying to quantify the risk. So, our main concern is to see that given a product's price and quantity, I am using the product as a very general term, is a financial product, that how can you find out, say for example, if the price of one particular stock is decreasing and you want to basically sell it. So, you want to find out that what is the other financial product which can be substitute in your portfolio such that your overall risk mitigation is met at the maximum possible extent. So, how this 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 relationship between risk and return can be done in the concept of financial instruments. I will come to that later on also. So, generally we know that for any investment or, 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 or any concept of demand and supply, there is the concept of marginal revenues. So, marginal revenues in a very simple sense means the per unit rate of change of that particular revenue. Now, you may be thinking that why we are going to consider marginal revenues. So, later on we will we'll see that when you solve the concept of optimization problem, they would be given a primal problem. I am using this word primal for the first time, but we will see that later on that what that actual problem means. If you have a primal problem of considering that in a very general sense as the primary problem, they would be a counterpart of that which is known as the dual problem. So, dual problem is basically consider that if you are standing in front of a mirror, so, if you are the primal, primal problem or so called primary um, objective what, what you want to solve and the mirror image which you see is basically the dual. So, there are techniques depending on what are the conditions based on which the primal problem have, be, have been formulated, you can convert that primal problem into a dual one and you will see that the properties or the, or the intrinsic properties of the primal and the dual problem are such there is a one to one relationship between them. And later on also we will see that if you are able to solve the primal problem with some techniques, they would definitely be methods that how you can solve the dual problem also. And there you will see the concept of marginal rates of substitution of products happening. So, that how you can basically replace one product or one financial instrument with the other can happen. Then we will also see that what is the concept of shadow prices. So, and what are the concept of shadow prices which are used in the opt on optimization sense can have very specific meaning in the area of, of finance and optimal portfolios we will also see that later. Then we will find out that as the prices or the quantities of the products change, products means again financial products, how does sensitive analysis help you to basically balance your portfolio, balance your risk, balance your returns would we will also consider that later on. Now, marginal revenues or return for any decision on financial instruments is basically the change in the revenue or the return associated with the unit change in the output. So, say for example, your total output depending on the price change in the overall market falls by 100 rupees or falls by 200 rupees or increases by 200 rupees. So, based on that you want to find out that what are the readjustment you want to do in your portfolio such that you are able to mitigate the overall risk or you can basically try to maximize your return or whatever your concern is depending on how you have formulated the problem. We will see that the marginal revenues is 0 at the quantity that generates the maximum total revenue. When we consider the concept of maximization or minimization, 
Uh, we will discuss now the concept of utility theory and why utility theory is generally utilized in finance and how it can be utilized in the area of decision making and how quantitative techniques as a such is basically utilized in utility theory. So, what do we mean by utility theory? So, different investors have different type of demands. Somebody would like to basically increase his or her returns, somebody is interested to basically try to minimize the risk and others may be interested in basically trying to make a compromise between risk and return. So, risk and return go hand in hand, but in opposite directions. We will see that later on also. So, each investor has in front of him or her a choice set. Choice means a set of, of decisions based on which he or she can take that, that uh, set of decisions. So, it is not single. There are many different type of choices and, and an investor or a person who is working in the area of finance would like to basically take up the decision in such a way that he or she choose the optimum one. And what is the optimum one? We will we'll discuss that later on also. So, so, consider in a very simple sense, there are outcomes and outcomes are give with one third probability. So, there are three and the outcome values are given by in the first column, if you see is 15, 10, 15 and in the other column it is 20, 12 and 8. Now, consider the values of 20, 12, 8, which is in the second one and the first one, which we discuss is 15, 10, 15 as given. So, we will consider why those values are. Now, if I ask you a question that which one decision would you take? So, obviously, all of you would basically see that on an average, what is the value of the outcome based on the probability of one third for each an outcome, which is there. So, if we basically analyze the two, two different situations, which is our A and B, your obvious answer would be that if the both the values are coming out to the same value, which is the expected value, which is 13.33, obviously it means that you are indifferent or you are basically not willing to take a decision whether A and B. So, but there would be some, some different type of, of examples which can be formulated or they can be different type of people who are there in the market who would be interested to take either the A decision or the B decision. So, how that is done, I am going to come to that later. Now, consider the situation is changed. Now, you have the probabilities are half, one fourth and one fourth. So, obviously, the sum obviously always remains same for the second and the fourth column. But now, if you see the uh, total expected value of the outcome for A is now 13.75 and for B, B it is still remains 13.33. So, if again I ask you the question, now people who were now indifferent between A and B depending on the so called expected value would li rather like to take the decision which is A because it is giving a higher value of 13.75. Now, consider that there are two teams and you want to ban and basically want to rank them. It is like there are two portfolios you want to rank them. So, if you see that the wins which you have in the first column for both the cases A and B which is the first block and the second block, you will find out that the overall points based on which the outcome would be won or loss. For the first case, the points of outcome are if you win, you get 2 points. If you basically draw, you get 1 point and for a loss, it is 0. But for the other one, it is 5, 1, 0. So, again, if you are trying to compare so called portfolio A and B, which in our case is basically trying to rank team A, A, X and Y for a game, you will find that the system of ranking changes. So, my question would be and obviously your question would immediately come out is that which means the ranking changes as the outcome changes. So, outcome does not mean only the probability, it means the outcome in value sense. Now, in case 1, if you consider team A has 100, team B has 95, which means A is higher ranked. So, what in, in this case is the points basis, like it is a round robin league or whatever it is a knockout one you have the points based on which you take a decision, which team is higher, which team is lower, who is first, who is second, so on and so forth. In case 2, which you saw with the different points, it will be team A has 220, team B has 230. So, obviously, it means B is much better than A. So, A would be ranked higher, which means that even when the situations are same, if you give different points for the outcomes, it means that the ranking immediately changes, which means that if you change your if your actual criteria based on which you are going to take a decision, you will have different results for different type of investment purposes or financial decisions. Now, in general, utility is given by expected value in very simple terms. 
So, when you have expected value, you have, we will see later, two things to consider. One is the random variables and what are the values, which are known as the realized values. And the second one is what is the probability distribution. So, probability distribution means the relative frequency, which we all know in the general statistic sense. Now, if a random value is a variable is there, the probability distribution would basically be akin to the how frequently a certain outcome is happening. So, does any type of probability distribution hold for the finance? We will consider that later on. Yes, they do. Now, here you have two things. One is the expected value of the utility is considered multiplying two terms. One is u w, which is a utility function. What is utility function? We will see that later. And one, the second term, which is basically the ratio, is the relative frequency, which is giving you the probability. So, our main task would be to find out what is the utility and also to find out the distribution of the utility function based on which you are going to take a decision of the ranking. Remember, in general, the utility values cannot be negative. So, obviously, if I am taking a decision, if it is negative value, obviously, I would never take that decision. But later on, we will see that in general economic sense, utility values, even if they are negative, some decisions are taken. But in the finance concept, we will consider such decisions are not taken. And to make our life simple, we will basically have the rule that if there is some negative returns, we would not be considering them. But later on, we will consider also the cases, if there are different type of negative returns, how to basically choose the one which you gives you the, the least of the overall worst scenario. So, we will rank them accordingly. So, ranking would, would happen based on the value of the utility, if they, even if they are negative. Now, the question is that, if the probability of the outcome changes, as you saw in the game on the match between A and B, there was a change in the ranking. Now, the question comes that, what if the utility function also changes? That u w, which you are change is considering, if it changes also, obviously, there is a change in the ranking. So, consider the first one, which is the highlighted one, which is u w is given by linear function. And in the second case, you have basically u w, which is given a quadratic function. So, we are first encountering the concept of quadratic utility function we will be considering later on in depth. So, if you have the outcomes of as given in the first column, so these are just theoretical values, hypothetical values. And if you see the, the w 1, which is the utility function based on w 1 and you have w 2, which is the utility function based on utility function 2, the corresponding utility values are given in the third column and the second last column and the corresponding probabilities are next to that. So, if I find out the expected value of the utility using utility 1, you will have a value of 3.825 and for the second one, you will have basically have a value of 12.69. So, obviously, it means that your, your ranking of, of both the expected value would basically change depending on the utility which you are using. Now, consider we have two different utility functions and again, the decisions are is like a no, no go or no go. That means, if a decision is taken, obviously, you get some utility. If a decision is not taken, obviously, you will consider your utility value is net worth is 0. So, if you consider that for utility function u w 1, the final value comes out to for the case of u a, given the utility function 1 is 1 1.69 and for the case of u b, given the utility function is 1, it is 2. So, obviously, it means you will choose b, because it is a value of 2, which is greater than 1.69. Now, what happens? Let us consider the utility function is now, again, if you see the value is basically a non-linear one, which is not a linear one. Then again, if you see and if again considering the same outcomes, if you find out the expected value for both of them, the value comes out to be 1.69. So, now you are indecisive between ranking of both the utilities. Utilities means the situations which you have in front of you. Consider a very simple case. A venture capital is considering two possibilities. The first alternative is buying government treasury bills. So, for the first time, we are trying to encounter government treasury bills, and they are the cases where the actual risk for the government treasury bills are zero, in theoretical sense. Practical sense, obviously, we will see that the values of a risk-free interest rate, which is a characteristic of the government uh, bills or, uh, or T bills, which we say, uh, are, do change. And we will basically see what are the values of the T bills in the Indian market, and you can find out information of them in the in the RBI side, which is the Reserve Bank side. And there is another the another uh, outcome which has three different nodes. Nodes means outcomes uh, of particular secondary cases. One, 
with the value of, of 10 lakhs, another is 5 lakhs and the third one is 1 lakh. And the corresponding utility function which you are seeing is given by u w which is w to the power half, which is basically a square root of that. Now, if you find out the value of the utility based on the expected one, then the first alternative would have basically have a, have a net value of 776, while the second one which has three outcomes would basically have a value of 609. You can find it out very easily doing the simple calculations. Like in the first case, if it is 6 lakhs, you will find out the square root of that. And the second case, if you basically have these three values and the corresponding expected returns uh, value in probabilities are given, what you will do is that you will multiply the corresponding utility which is u w that means square root of this multiplied by half, square root of this multiplied by 0.4, square root of this multiplied by 0.4 and you can find out the value of 608. So, obviously, your first um, uh, government bond which one is the first decision gives you higher, higher expected value, you will take that. Now, would the above problem give you the same result if you basically add any constant term? Answer is yes. Without going to the, the, the actual conceptual framework, we will consider there would be some decisions where a, if a constant is added, how the value does not change. Now, consider a very, very simple case, a theoretical one, but for the first time we will try to basically bring a different type of utility, which is basically based on the property of log. And why log is coming for the first time, we will consider that very slowly in within another 2 or 3 minutes. So, the first column are the days, second column are the prices, third column are the log of the prices and any of the number of outcomes and the corresponding probabilities are given. So, if you find out the expected value, expected value comes out to be 6.91. If you use a different utility function which is given by p to the power 1 fourth, then the value comes out to be 33.63. Now, the general properties of utility which would be important for us later on are only two important characteristics. One is that more I give to a person, more he wants, which is known as basically the property of non cessation. So, the more wealth a person has, more he or she wants in order to basically increase the overall expected value of the outcome. That is point number one. And if you see the last line of this slide, this means the rate of change of the utility function is has to be negative or uh, positive, which means the marginal rate is always positive. So, that has some significance later on. Next property we will consider is that any human being can be classified under three categories. That means, he or she is a risk aversion person. That means, he or she is not interested in take a risk. The, the second characteristic, sub characteristic is basically risk neutral. That means, given two situations where the one you have the deterministic outcome and another is the probabilist outcome. The person will always try to analyze the expected value of both the ca cases and take a decision such that he or she is basically indifferent between them. And the third case is basically a person who seeks risk. That means, in a way that he or she is taking the risk in such a way that he or she thinks that in the long run the, the, the outcome would be positive in a sense that this that would basically mitigate the risk which is being taken by that person. And we will consider these properties when, when somebody takes a decision in the area of finance. So, now, we will consider a very simple case which is known as a lottery. So, consider on the right hand side you have the Shole coin, where if you toss it, both sides are heads and your actual probability is 1 and the outcomes are also given in 1. In other case, you invest 1 and your probabilities are a simple coin, you get a probability of, of half, outcome is 2, probability of half, your outcome is 0. So, if you analyze both of them, the expected value in both the cases are 1 and 1. Now, if I ask you a question without going into deta details that which one would you choose? Would you choose the right one where it is a deterministic case or would you choose the left one which is the probabilistic case? So, we will see that they would be in general sense three categories of person. Person 1 who takes the probabilistic case, person 2 who is indifferent between them and person 3 who basically takes the deterministic case. So, if I change the probabilities, if I change the outcomes, you will find out a human being can be categorized in any one of the category depending on what the outcome is. So, I may, a, may be a person. So, if the value which is given as 2 and 0 and 1, if those values changes in quantums, so I may be tempted to change my decision in order to basically take such a case that means I am basically being benefited by the overall decision.